Let us pray. Gracious God, as we turn to your word for us, may the Spirit of God rest upon us. Help us to be steadfast in our hearing, in our speaking, in our believing, and in our living. Amen. One of my favorite Advent hymns this time of year is the angel Gabriel from Heaven Came. Stanza three of that hymn describes Mary as such. Then gentle Mary meekly bowed her head. To me be as it pleaseth God, she said. Ah, gentle Mary, mild, meek, handmaiden of the Lord, head bowed in reverence. This has been the predominant view of Mary, and not without reason. Our hymns are full of such images. Gentle Mary laid her child, according to another hymn, in the bleak midwinter, speaks of the maiden's bliss. Mary was that mother mild. We sing in once in royal David city, gentle, meek, mild. So even in scripture, when Mary says, how will it be that this child will come to me? The angel Gabriel answers, and the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Mary is overshadowed by God's power. It's the same overshadowing that happens during the transfiguration of Jesus. Remember the disciples go up to a high mountain and a cloud covers them, overshadows them? Well, they enter that cloud in that story and they are so frightened that they are stunned into silence. So yes, Mary, an instrument of God, but God will overshadow her. She will be cloaked and covered with God's power. It's no wonder that gentleness and meekness have been two of Mary's defining characteristics. She overshadowed. She's barely visible. But today, if you read a little further from the text that I just read, the next few verses, you encounter Mary singing a song, her song, referred to as the Magnificat. It's usually a lullaby, something delicate, fitting for gentle Mary, who meekly bows her head. Well, hear these words. Decide for yourself if these are the words of gentle and meek Mary. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. So much for hiding. <laughs> in an overshadowing cloud. The Magnificat doesn't sound like a lullaby from one who is docile and meek and mild, concealed in a cloud of God's power. No, it is a song of revolution and a celebration of Mary's own unique role. It sounds like Mary knew a lot. Oh, she knew. She didn't waste any time going there, to the heart of the message to which God calls her. She knew that her baby boy would one day rule the nations. Oh, she knew that he would be the Lord of all creation. The Magnificat is Mary's yes to participating in God's story. 
Mary's words resonate with the persistent theme of the Hebrew scriptures, with words like from Miriam and Hannah and others. It's a theme of God's choosing the powerless and the poor to make known God's purposes for all of humankind. My soul magnifies the Lord. Other translations might say, glorifies, exalts, praises the Lord. Mary's life magnifies the Lord. Like a magnifying glass, Mary's life magnifies the work of God. Magnify, to make larger, to make larger the mighty works of God. Through her, we see who God is. A life of faithfulness brings God's gracious intentions into the world, into sharper focus, into greater detail. And this is our call in the Advent season. It's all well and good to sing God's praises and to glorify God and exalt God, and we certainly do a good job of that this time of year. But Mary urges us not to stop at praise. How are our lives magnifying God? When people look through us, through the lens of our lives, do they see God? Can they see God more clearly? In order for us to magnify God, we must be clear ourselves. If our lenses are clouded up, any image of God will be clouded as well. In fact, magnifiers of God are called upon to be transparent. Many people this time of year tell me how hollow the pre-Christmas revelry seems to be. The ubiquitous decorations, the 24-hour radio stations playing chirpy holiday songs, world without end. It's as if in the midst of a world constantly at war with itself, we just need jolly Christmas cheer. And we're going to fake it on our way through it. But if we are magnifiers of God's reality, then we are called to be transparent in the face of all of that. To be real when real for you is depressed. Or sad when you face the first Christmas without a loved one or dismayed at what Christmas has become. And we have to tell the truth about that. And the church has to be a place where, we, where that can be named. And as magnifiers of God, we need to align with God's purposes for the world. And if not, we magnify all the wrong things. And if we have to be aligned with God's purpose for us in the world, and we have to acknowledge that there are people in pain and in deep need. Communities under siege from gun violence here in Columbus alone. Houses of worship destroyed by powerful and deadly storms. Healthcare workers facing yet another surge of the pandemic. Grief upon grief. Mary's song acknowledges this as well. That although she begins with singing what God has done for her in her life, she moves quickly to the broken world. Mary sings of the weak and the lowly and the poor and the hungry. Every hurting son is her son. Every daughter, her daughter. She bears them in her own body as she carries her own son. Before, they were among her. And now they dwell within her. That song erupts from a place deep down where she carries them. Because the Magnificat is more than a proud yes. It's a song of defiance. It's a spiritual in the vein of we shall overcome. It's a protest song. It is a counter testimony to the dysfunction that passes as normal in our world. And Mary sings this song because her pregnancy itself is a counter-testimony to the world. Now, God didn't choose a queen, a woman of noble birth. God chose a young peasant woman 
God assessed the demands of the world and the expectations of a king that might come in power and might and said, nope, I don't think so. And in her song, Mary affirms a divine no. No to the proud and the delusions of the greatness. No to the powerful who remain complacent. And no to the hunger that remains unfed. And no to the suffering that goes unrelieved. No. 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 The word is sharp. No. It's like a laser point. Remember that magnifying glass? A magnifier not only makes things look larger, but it can also catch sunlight and focuses it in such a way as to start a fire. And that's the power of a prophet witness. So that every time we say no, well then, then the fires of the spirit are called again. It's like a little Pentecost moment right here in the middle of Advent. No is just as much a part of Mary's Magnificat as yes is. This, too, is our call in Advent, where our culture's way of doing Christmas clatters noisily against the church's observance of Advent. Mary knows that there is not much time. Oh, she knows. She cuts right to the places that need the world's attention, and she doesn't hold back. Amid the hustle, we dare to sing these words. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And we do that not to create some dramatic buildup to December 25th, wondering if he will come. Of course, he will come. He will come, and he will just come at the right time. We bid the Savior come because we still need a Savior. Well, stories of hurt, and violence and oppression are still too prevalent, and they remind us of this reality, that the world still needs healing and hope. We need to be reminded that through the darkest nights and in the loneliest of places, the dawn draws near. The dawn of a new day, the dawn of a more perfect union, the dawn of a reconciling community, the dawn of a new creation, a light to the nations, a world turned upside down. And so we can sing with Mary defiantly, expectantly, confident in the God who shows strength and mercy, in hope for the day when we will all be free. We sing God's jubilant yes, and God's defining no. And in our song, may God be magnified. Amen.